Republicans shut me out of a hearing on contraception. In fact, on that panel, they didn't hear from a single woman. Even though they were debating an issue that affects nearly every woman. Because it happened in Congress, people noticed. But it happens all the time. Too many women are shut out and silenced. So while I'm honored to be standing at this podium, it easily could have been any one of you. I'm here because I spoke out. And this November, each of us must speak out. During this campaign, we've heard about two profoundly different futures that could await women in this country, and how one of those futures looks like an offensive, obsolete relic of our past. Warnings of that future are not distractions. They are not imagined. That future could become real. In that America, your new president could be a man who stands by when a public figure tries to silence a private citizen with hateful slurs. A man who, stand, who won't stand up to those slurs or to any of the extreme bigoted voices in his own party. It would be an America in which you have a new vice president who co-sponsored a bill that would allow pregnant women to die preventable deaths in our emergency rooms. An America in which states humiliate women by forcing us to endure invasive ultrasounds that we don't want and our doctors say that we don't need. An America in which access to birth control is controlled by people who will never use it. An America in which politicians redefine rape, and victims are victimized all over again, in which someone decides which domestic violence victims deserve access to services and which don't. We know what this America would look like, and in a few short months, that's the America that we could be but that's not the America that we should be, and it's not who we are. We've also seen another America that we could choose. In that America, we'd have the right to choose. It's an America in which no one can charge us more than men for the exact same health insurance, in which no one can deny us affordable access to the cancer screenings that could save our lives, in which we decide when to start our families, an America in which our president, when he hears that a young woman has been verbally attacked, thinks of his daughters, not his delegates or his donors. And in which our president stands with all women and strangers, come together and reach out and lift her up. And then, Instead of trying to silence her, you invite me here. And you give me this microphone to amplify our voice. That's the difference.
Over the last six months, I've seen what these two futures look like. And six months from now, we're all going to be living in one future or the other, but only one. A country where our president either has our back or turns his back. A country that honors our foremothers by moving us forward, or one that forces our generation to refight battles that they already won. A country where we mean it when we talk about personal freedom. Or one where that freedom doesn't apply to our bodies or to our voices. We talk often about choice. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's now time to choose.